in my life and doubtless in the lives of all those present with me this evening, there have been certain texts, passages of poetry or prose, which once read have never been forgotten. Perhaps for the majority of us, these decisive texts are few in number, but rare though they may be, they have altered our lives. They have helped to make us what we are. One such text, so far as my own life journey is concerned, is a paragraph in Thomas Merton's Conjectures of a Guilty Bystander, definitely my favorite among his many works. Familiar though it will certainly be to many of you, I shall nonetheless venture to read this passage now. At the center of our being is a point of nothingness which is untouched by sin and by illusion, a point of pure truth, a point or spark which belongs entirely to God, which is never at our disposal, from which God disposes of our lives, which is inaccessible to the fantasies of our own mind or the brutalities of our own will. This little point of nothingness and of absolute poverty is the pure glory of God in us. It is, so to speak, his name written in us as our poverty, as our indigence, as our dependence, as our sonship. It is like a pure diamond blazing with the invisible light of heaven. It is in everybody. And if we could see it, we would see these billions of points of light coming together in the face and blaze of a sun that would make all the darkness and cruelty of life vanish completely. I have no program for this seeing. It is only given, but the gate of heaven is everywhere. In this passage, Merton does not in fact use the word heart, but surely he is referring with remarkable precision and insight to what the Christian East means in its ascetic and mystical theology when it refers to the deep heart. So tonight, in exploring what Orthodox spirituality understands by the heart, I feel confident that I am developing a theme central to Merton's own concern. 